Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're making a fat giraffe with a very thin neck. This will be a sculpting lesson for beginners, not complete beginners. So some understanding of the interface is necessary. If you're a complete beginner, then do check out my complete beginners guide playlist. And this is for someone that's probably gone through that and maybe a couple of other tutorials. For this sculpt, I'm using a graphics tablet. You don't need one, you can use a mouse. It's just a lot quicker and easier with a tablet. If you want to know more about the graphics tablet I'm using, then check out the links in the description. And also check out my playlist on this channel and my website for other great resources. Okay, so I'm in Blender 3.0, as you can see here, and it's the alpha version. You don't have to have Blender 3, it will work in earlier versions as well. I'm not using any new features. So nothing should be different from you from the current versions. Now this is the default startup scene. I think it's actually better if we go to File, New, and then use a Sculpting Startup. That puts us into Sculpt Mode, and you can see the Sculpting tab up here, and gives us a sphere to start with, with lots of subdivisions. My screencast keys, as you can see, are displayed down the bottom here. And I'll pull out these brushes so you can see their names. If you're ever unsure about the brush I'm using, then it's highlighted in blue. Now the brush I like to start with is the snake hook. That means you can kind of pull the mesh out like this. If you pull it too far, it goes a bit distorted. That's to do with the amount of polygons you've got on your mesh. I'll undo that. What I'll do also is come over to the overlays here and put the statistics on. That way you can actually see the face count there. So we've got about 25,000 faces. That should be absolutely fine for most computers. And we'll go a bit beyond that later on. Now my giraffe is symmetrical, so we can click the x-axis here. That's the x-axis going across here in red. That means whatever I do on one side will be repeated on the other. I'll undo that. Now sometimes in 3.0 it's a bit buggy and it undoes the axes as well. So just be careful of that. Okay, so let's start with the snake hook tool. I want to make my brush nice and big. And for that I press F and then move my mouse side to side. And you can find the size settings and the brush settings in the workspace settings here. And you've got the radius here. I'll zoom out a fair bit, make my brush a bit smaller and just make this sort of a bit more bulbous. So it's a bit thicker at the bottom than it is at the top. And this is the front here again. Look at your Cartesian coordinates to figure out where the front is over the top here. And we're just creating this kind of egg shape that leans towards the front. Kind of like that. Okay, so then we want the neck of the giraffe. So I'll make my brush smaller, probably around here. And let's pull that out and see how it looks. So pull it and stretch it out here like this, nice and tall like that. And can you see the topology stretching here? If I zoom in a bit, you can see it stretching. If I go to wireframe now, you can see that stretch there, that topology being stretched out. So what we need to do is what's called a remesh. I'll go back to my solid mode and your remesh options are up the top here. And at the moment it's set to 0.035. That looks all right for a remesh size. We can actually see what it looks like in here by pressing Shift R. And that will show you exactly what the size of your mesh will look like when you remesh. And you can move left and right if you want to change the size of it. But with 0.35 looks good. So we can press Control R, which is the same as pressing this remesh button here. So Control R is the shortcut. And now if I go to wireframe mode, you can see what it's done. It's remeshed it and taken away that stretch and made it all sort of even throughout. It's back to solid mode there. Okay, so we can adapt the shape very slightly, maybe squish the neck in a little bit. I'll bring my brush size up with, with F and just modify this slightly. Now it's a little bit lumpy along the neck. And what we can do is we can hold down Shift to smooth. So holding down Shift will smooth that out. That does make it kind of smaller because the polygons shift in on themselves. But about there looks quite good. Probably a little bit too small now, but we'll change that in a second and we'll smooth out around here as well, just so it's a nice smooth shape. So holding down shift and painting. Okay, so this has gone a bit too small. We can use the inflate brush just here, a little bit smaller and just inflate that back out. Useful brush, the inflate. I'm probably back to where I started, but sometimes you need to test these things. Okay, this is looking fun. Let's go back to the snake hook and do the legs. So round to the front, I think. You can press one on your numpad to go to front view, and it gives you this orthographic with the grid that can be helpful for making sure things are level. I'll change my brush size down and bring out a front leg like this. And I want them slightly pointing inwards, so you can sort of grab them inwards like that. Maybe not so close together. And let's have a look at that from the side. That's not too bad. Three to go to side view on your numpad. That's probably a little bit far back at the moment. So make my brush nice and big and we can move those forward like this. And can you see my mesh is stretching around the place and we'll sort that out in a moment. And just slowly adapting these. So they're kind of diamond shapes. I'll go to side view again. 
make sure that bottom is level. Now the snake hook tool can be a little bit tricky to find this really fine control like that. You can go across to the grab brush instead and that doesn't kind of rotate it as you're pulling it around. So the grab brush can be easier to control but you can't really pull the mesh out in the same way. But the snake hook tends to be better for sort of big movements. I kind of prefer the snake hook and you get used to it but you can use either the snake hook or the grab tool. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference but the snake hook if I go to that you can kind of rotate it as well whilst you're pulling things around. So you can decide which to use, the grab or the snake hook. If you want more control, the grab is that little bit easier. Okay, so I think that's a nice shape for the legs. Maybe a little bit in here and a little bit across here. Hold down shift and smooth some of this out. Can you see it flicking to my smooth brush over here, which looks kind of strange. Okay, so we've got a lot of stretching in here. So we press control R to do our remesh. And now we've lost that stretching and we've got a bit more control of our objects. In fact, I want this leg to follow the shape of this curve here so let's pull that in slightly and resizing my brush to sort of pull it down and into position okay that's a bit better smooth out a little bit there and then for the back so three on my numpad to go to side view and i've got the grab tool this time let's see what that's like i'll pull that out down to about there and then we'll go around to the back and see what that's looking like <laughs> that looks quite funny i quite like it so we'll do a quick remesh Control r to do that remesh so that gets rid of the stretching and then we'll smooth out around here. The bum might be a little bit big now. Let's make my brush nice and big and smooth out as well and see how we're going. Okay, so the back legs are bigger than the front and I want somewhere in between. So I'm just gonna modify these legs using that grab brush. So F to resize and just move them around until they're a bit more similar. This one can go a bit wider. Make sure you move around your object a fair bit though and see where they are from all the angles because this is going a little bit bulbous around here so we can make my brush bigger and just move that in slightly so you want to keep that silhouette as you go round your shape okay looking pretty fun probably a little bit too wide here for the back legs so i'll stretch those out and then can you see the stretching Control r to get rid of that stretching and remesh so always ready to do that quick remesh. Bit of smoothing, see how we're getting on. Getting close. Just bring this down a little bit to here. It's losing that silhouette around there, but it looks like they've got a big bum then, that's quite fun. And zooming right out to see our shape. That's great fun, that is. Okay, let's work on the head. So come up to the top here. Now trying to get the viewport to the center point here is quite awkward. So if you hold down Alt and middle mouse button, that will zoom you in on that spot and center your viewport around there. So now when I zoom in, I'm right in the center. I move it over this way because my toolbar is taking it away from the center. Now for the head, you can actually go into layout mode, add a sphere in here, and then another for the front. But we're gonna do this all in sculpt mode. So we'll go to the inflate brush and we'll just inflate the head into this big ball like this. I'll zoom out now and see what that's looking like. Very small head at the moment. And a sort of quite nice big round head like this. It's looking about right, I think. So really stretch there, so Control R for our remesh again. Need a bit of smoothing out there, so hold down Shift for smoothing out. And now we can perhaps use the grab brush this time to pull it out at the front. Side view with three on my numpad and about here. And let's pull out the front just here. Okay, let's see what that's looking like. Sort of getting there. I think it's a bit low though. I don't know why I pulled it out that low. So let's bring that up to somewhere around there and make him sort of have some big sort of jowls as well. Of course, you might want to use some reference images. That will certainly help you. So see what giraffes actually look like and then exaggerate the form. And that's looking a bit better. Now I've got references on another screen with real giraffes and little sketches I've done and what other people have done to sort of stylize them as well. Okay, we're a bit stretched, so let's press Control R for the remesh. Now that's not particularly fine now, so we can probably take the remesh up a bit. We're only 30,000 faces, so it's quite low. So let's press Shift R to bring back our grid, and then we can bring that in by moving our mouse to the side, or pen to the side if you're using a display tablet. And we want to go fairly fine, maybe around here. And then Control R to apply that, and you can see how much smaller those voxels are, and we're almost up to 100,000 faces now. But that should give us a nice lot to play with. Okay, so I want to do some 
kind of horns at the top. Let's come up to the top here and bring some horns out. Let's see what that looks like in terms of where they're going. They're sort of slightly towards the front if I look at my reference images. Something like that. Control R for the remesh and we'll bring them in and then outwards, sort of more cartoony like that. I'll use the snake hook now because then I can rotate it. You can see the rotation of the snake hook tool being used there. And Control R to remesh and then the inflate once again at the very top. It's a sort of ball-like in some ways. And Control R to remesh. Let's have a look how we're doing. Kind of fun. I feel like the head could be a bit bigger, so we'll go with the inflate and make him sort of fatter face. And maybe just a bit at the end there as well. And just using the inflate brush, it sort of rounds things out and keeps them quite cute. And hold down shift. But remember when you're holding down shift, it can make it a bit smaller, so sometimes you need to inflate or do a remesh before you hold down shift to do the smoothing. So control R to remesh and then start doing some smoothing that's a bit better. Okay, so we'll try and make this a bit cuter, I think. Maybe a bit more of a snout that's rounded. And that's kind of fun. And we need an area for the eyes. Now the eyes are to the side, somewhere around here. So again, using the inflate brush, nice and simple. You can use the draw brushes for this as well, or you can grab the mesh and pull it outwards. But the inflate brush seems to be working quite well. Control R to remesh, remember. Let's zoom out and see how we're looking. Now if you don't like zooming out all the time, you can come up to the very corner of your viewport and drag out a new window. I'll press T to get rid of the toolbar, and then I can have that as my kind of reference for how it's looking overall, and then zoom into this area and work on the shape here. So it's working all right. I think we need some eyeballs in there. So this time I use the draw tool just for the sake of showing you a different brush. So once again, F to resize, and we can just draw some eyeballs in there. And the control R to remesh, and they're roughly the right size there. His brow's probably a little bit big, so we can smooth out the top there slightly to get rid of some of that. And now a good tool for sort of digging into the mesh is the crease brush. So I can sort of crease it around here to make those eyes a bit more round. So it's the first brush that digs into the mesh, but it also squeezes the topology together slightly. It looks like he's got a frown at the moment though. So let's get the grab brush and frowns are caused by the eyebrows pointing downwards, so we can lift those up a bit. Try and keep the eyeballs around though, and there we go. Now we haven't got any ears yet, so we need to pull those out. I'll use the grab brush again, and they're around about here, so let's just keep grabbing that outwards and make them fairly nice and round. Now our topology is really stretched there, so Control R, and then continue pulling them out, and, and they're going backwards quite a lot there, probably a little bit too much. So let's grab them out to the front like this, out to there and around to the front. Every now and again, taking a look around here and seeing how we're looking. It's quite fun really, isn't it? Probably around to there and maybe a little bit of the inflate just to fatten those ears up a little bit. And then the draw brush and for the first time we're using the reverse draw brush which is holding down control to dig in. And you can see that sort of makes them, kind of circles them out. If I keep going with this, you have to be a bit careful because it might underlap the other one, but they've done some really excellent work with the sculpting modes that it doesn't really do that anymore. But just watch out, if I go too far and it underlaps or kind of goes in on itself over here and you see the other side of the mesh coming through, make sure that doesn't happen because that will mess up your mesh altogether. If that does, just smooth it out with shift or use the inflate tool to kind of inflate the areas. How are we looking? And that's looking quite fun at the moment, isn't it? Just say yes. Okay, some nostrils. Let's use the draw tool and the reverse again. So F to Resize my brush, nostrils near the front, holding down control and digging in. Now we might need to up the resolution a bit. Some of these are looking a bit blocky. So let's press Shift R over here so we can kind of see the size. And I'm going down to 0 0.015, round about there. And let's press Control R for the remesh. And we've gone up to about 200,000. We've got a lot more to play with now. We can kind of refine some of these areas a little bit. But this is probably quite a good resolution for maybe 3D printing, but you won't be able to go too much more detailed than this, depending on what sort of printer you're using, in my experience anyway. Okay, so I might want a line for the mouth. I'm not sure it needs one, but let's try it out, because then I can show you the draw sharp brush. So click on that, and then I can draw a line in here for the mouth coming around here like this. Now it might not work. It looks a bit stupid if you ask me. I can always smooth this area out to see what that looks like. Actually, that looks a little bit better, maybe a little bit further about there. 
And shall we make him happy by coming up this way a little bit like that? <laughs> he looks a bit dopey now, and I quite like that. We'll do another remesh, so Control R, and then give it a bit more shape. So this draw sharp, you don't actually have to hold down Control to dig in with it. It's a natural sort of dig in brush. So it has the reverse, it pushes into the mesh. But it might be digging in a little bit far there. So remember to smooth out if you have to. You can always use the crease brush as well to sort of refine that shape a little bit. It pulls the topology together and smooths it out. It's quite clever. How are we looking? We might want a bit more bulk around here so the inflate brush is good for that. Okay, let's just smooth a few areas out with the crease tool, make sure these eyes are reasonably round. Let's use the inflate as well to kind of help them. And maybe the crease brush on the nose a little bit as well. We can kind of sharpen the edges up by holding down control and using the crease brush and that pulls the topology outwards and together. So it creates a bit more of a line. And that's looking pretty good fun. Last thing to do then is the tail. Let's come to the back here. I'll come around to the back of the beast over here as well. And to, with the grab brush, try and find the middle. So undo until you find the middle. There we go, about there. And this is probably better with the snake hook, but it's getting really stretched. So control R to remesh. Smooth out if you have to. And probably around about here. Nice short tail. Let's just check we are in the right place. Not really, it needs to go up much higher. So I'll undo those steps. Probably about here. Let's have a look from about here. That's better. So bring that up, nice small tail, and control R to remesh, and a inflate brush at the end here. And I want this to be a bit thinner here, so let's smooth that out until it's nice and thin, and smooth this area out as well. Might have to use the grab brush in here to sort of bring it together, so it's a bit more sensible. Smoothing out around the place. Let's smooth these legs out a little bit as well, just to tidy them up because we remeshed since modeling them so they can do a little bit of smoothing around there. And you could always go to side view like this and just make sure they're lined up for when they're standing on the floor. And that looks a bit better, doesn't it? Also, just have a quick look. If you're doing something like 3D printing, then you might want to just double check that there's a bit of balance to it. So the legs are slightly forward. We've got a bit more weight at the back for the shape of the head at the top there. And I think that should work. Might want a little bit more shape maybe to the neck. A few minor adjustments, I think. Perhaps to the shape and just have a play around making sure you're happy with everything. Maybe a tiny little hole at the front there to give it an ind indication of where they're looking. <laughs> Probably looks a little bit too startled now. Might just bring the eyeballs down a touch so they don't look quite as wide. And that's great fun. So there we have it, a nice simple giraffe. If you want to learn about painting, then comment below and maybe we'll go through how to paint this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.